I'm here at Confitex 2025 here in Taiwan to learn more about the future of AI and so much more. And I'll be honest, I haven't learned as much about AI as I probably should have. I've always had my finger on the pulse. So on this episode, I want to give you a rundown of some of the cool, amazing things happening here at Computex and what you need to know about the future of what AI is going to do to all of our lives. Let's do this out together. I'm Ricky, and this is Tube DaVinci. Now, even within the category of physical AI, there's subcategorizations. For example, general AI, which would be like a robot that can walk around, do your laundry, and then fold your clothes, and then park your car. There's also very specific dedicated robots like this one. This one has been programmed for sanding. So the sander is not running because the dust in the room, but complex contours, complex shapes. If you were trying to build cabinets or a skateboard, you could program this robot to know exactly how to do it, how to handle all the edge cases and points and build systems more easily. This company is building the software to make this easier to run. But this robot wouldn't turn around and then fold your laundry, but it would be really good at this one use case. So even things like woodworking, sanding, right? Picking off wheels in a car, workshop stuff, car repair shops, they can all leverage some of this stuff here in the future. So I have home security cameras that constantly alert me for every little thing and it's super annoying. But check this out. This is a new age of AI where we have labeling happening in real time. So this live feed just picked me up. Now it just picked up Claudia, but it's picking people up and then writing what they're doing. So then imagine if you could feed this into like an AI assistant who could say, it knows who you are, your family and your kids and not bother you when that happens. But when your front doorbell has somebody else, someone wearing a mask or imagine you can take actions like that. That's kind of the really cool part about just taking cameras. This is just a traditional camera. It's just the process that happens after it. And this is something that I'm thinking about doing in my house because I'm tired of all the false positives and all the notifications that I get when it's just my wife over and over or my kids or nothing at all sometimes. Here's another amazing use case for AI, is in medicine. I've always wondered, why can't we just go in and have full body imaging done to see if there's anything wrong with us just more frequently? Instead, doctors normally say, come back when you're 40 and you're 50. And the reason is, it takes a lot of really trained people to view those images, to see if there's anything wrong with you, if there's a tumor growing or a cancer forming. And that's something that we're never gonna solve because we'll never have enough doctors and technicians, people who are qualified to do that kind of work. But AI could do that. Imagine just coming in, getting a full body scan, and all of that data could just be monitored and tracked by AI and look for things. And if everything looks good, you're good. Or if there's a potential cause for concern, that pattern in very standardized data is something AI could do really well, and it could be a complete game changer for medicine. Just look at how much mechanical engineering goes into building an AI server. Look at this, leak detectors, because now we're moving to an age where all these dyes and chips are all water cool. Look at these water cooling ribbons. You can see all the quick disconnect hoses and all the water blocks. These are copper water blocks where water is filtered through to extract the heat. But what happens if there's a leak? Well, you've got leak detectors. You've got all the slides and rails for how you pull these racks in and out. 12 volt bus bars over there. We see a 56 volt bus bar. There's so much that goes into it. There's different voltages for different parts of the componentry. And look at this. Look at where all the water cooling and water ribbons and manifolds serve all the layers of a rack. This looks like hardware for my F-18 fighter jet more than it does a computer server, but this is how advanced these things have become. I remember in 2013, I had a GTX 770, and that's what a heat sink for a 770 looked like. That's how much heat it made and how much heat it had to dissipate. But this is a really awesome visual showing you over the years how much more compute there is, how much tighter the transistors are, and how much more TDP, the thermal load that these graphics cards are applying. And this is the heatsink for a 2025 RTX 5090, a graphics card I really want. It's so cool seeing some of these companies that I grew up with. I had a light on DVD burner back in like the late 90s uh, when I was a kid. But check this out. So this is an entire water cooling loop system and it shows you all these diagnostics like temperature. Interestingly, they have the dew point listed. And the reason why is if the temperature in the water reaches the dew point, you'd have condensation forming outside. You'd have water droplets on your hardware. So you don't want that. You gotta make sure that the water temperature, I think is around 23 degrees Celsius, 
It's about that dew point. You don't have that problem. One of the things I always learn from shows like Computex is how much collaboration there is in business. For example, this is Birdiv. They make power management solutions and liquid cooling solutions for a lot of NVIDIA stuff, Premier Partner, and they're out here and they're showing off some of their amazing rack technology. You can just see some of the ribbons and the cooling and what goes into making these things possible. It's really a collaborative effort. NVIDIA has a very rich software ecosystem built on top of that hardware stack. The first part is called NVIDIA Omniverse. NVIDIA Omniverse is a giant simulation engine. For self-driving cars, you need to simulate the car, but you also need to simulate the road and the conditions, right? So like you simulate New York City, you simulate the car, yeah. you simulate everything going on around it, traffic patterns, everything like that. Right. That happens in NVIDIA Omniverse. If you want to simulate it during bad weather, nighttime, right? So you want to get like different readings of all the sensors. Earth 2 is like one way to make that happen, right? So Earth 2 is all about like climate, weather, day, night, cloud cover, moisture, right? Like you can imagine you're trying to train a robot to do something, you want more than one data point. NVIDIA Cosmos takes that one gold standard simulation and creates 10,000 iterations of it. It's, let me change the weather. Let me change the backdrop. Let me change the colors, the refraction and reflection. Let me do all that in a way that's still coherent to uh, the simulation, right? So it's like, everything still makes sense with physics. Roads still look like roads. It's still New York City. But what's happening is now, you've collected 10,000 times more data. So Computex has a little something for everybody. Whether you're like B2B running AI servers or a gaming enthusiast and want to just play the latest AAA titles, there's a little something for everybody. I'm playing Counter-Strike 2 here on a 5090. Now, I have this love affair with graphics cards and I'm not the best gamer in the world, but we use our 4090 graphics cards for all sorts of things. Running AI models locally, for example. We also use it for rendering. We use Blender for 3D scenes in our videos and we use these RTX graphics cards for all of our rendering. So these things are so incredibly versatile and it's a good excuse to keep upgrading to play the latest games. Ooh. All right, check this out. This is the Verdict Pull Chip CDU 350. This is a liquid to air cooler for a server. You see these spins here, these are the heat exchangers. So all the cold water gets redirected back, ducted through these spins. Cool air passes by, gets warmer and sucks in that heat. What's absolutely insane about this is this system right here can reject 350 kilowatts of heat. That's a huge amount in a system that stands this tall. Now there's liquid to liquid, liquid chilling. There's different ways of doing this, but this is liquid to air. And it's one of those solutions that you might need depending on how your server room is set up. But just look at the size of these heat exchangers. It's incredible engineering, it really is. Now Computex isn't just about AI and robotics. There's also an automotive component. Check this out. This is an optical cable camera system. And when you bring in optics instead of copper, you can lower latency. And that really matters when you're using cameras, not just to show a little image on your rear view mirror, but for AI. When you need to get those images and processing and labeling that much more quickly, this stuff is gonna matter. So you can see these are all fiber optic lines that go out to the cameras. And there's all sorts of things that we'll have to think about differently when we're trying to have AI in real time make decisions on what it sees. Check out this product by Acer. This is a short throw projector with cameras and other sensors and stuff. But what it does, which is pretty clever, is it acts as like a large tablet. So this is just any old tabletop, it's not special. So this could be your dining table, for example. But this is not a touchpad. But when the shadows of my fingers converge, that's when the strolling happens. Isn't that cool? Really responsive. I've seen this before, but this is a, a great example. Some pretty cool tech. All right, so that is three days here at Computex. We've seen so much from computer graphics cards, all the really cool breakthroughs happening in gaming to business to business stuff, e-mobility, and so much more. This has been an amazing show. I came in here with a goal to learn more about what companies that are building the future of AI are working on so I can get a better feel for it. And I gotta tell you, I definitely got that here. Stuff from like plastic waste robots, medical stuff, so much more. There's just a ton to see. So Computex 2026, if it's not on your calendar, put it on your calendar, come out here. So huge thanks Computex for having us out and hopefully we'll see you guys here next year.